the song is about placing our happiness in something external and uh, thinking that that is the answer to uh, sustaining it. And that's really, at the end of the day, a, a huge trap because uh, if we can't have that thing, then we can't be happy. And uh, it sort of makes fun of the idea that our, our happiness sits uh, sort of just on the other side of the bridge all the time. We initially developed a really involved script. There was a lot of locations, a pretty large cast, but then quarantine hit, and a lot of that was completely taken off the table. Um, we weren't going to be able to shoot in person. Elliot's in New York and I'm in Minneapolis. It was sort of like we didn't want to be beat by the idea of quarantine or that any of this was going on and uh, needed to find a way around the uh, all of the limitations that we're now facing. Elliot had an idea about throwing up a TV sort of art installation and putting images on screen that were really timely. And that kind of just sparked this idea in my mind about, you know, making a film about an artist stuck in quarantine. We had to work within the confines of my house and, you know, just really myself and my father as a film crew with everybody else on an iPad. Uh, turn more on a 45. Right now you're kind of pro more profile to that sink than I would like. There you go. I was, you know, thoroughly excited to prep in the way that it would be, uh, that you would need to in order to make this thing happen and, and have it look like, like the goal was to like, have it look like we had a full crew there. Matt, I mean, the pre-production that he went through to, to make this work was exhausting in a good way. I mean, he uh, had us run through every shot in the whole video twice, and we storyboarded the entire, or he storyboarded the entire thing. Um, he had me draw layouts of my house. I, I planned 120 shots, um, and we pretty much got them. I mean, we got close to it. It was six days of shooting total. It was supposed to be seven, and then I like threw my back out, and we turned it into six days. There was the week of shooting, you know, where where that was a lot on Elliot and his dad, like just a grueling. I mean, they took on the 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 workload of an entire film crew, you know, to be able to make this happen. He went to film school briefly, and then ended up uh, quitting to become a recording engineer. And so it was sort of a an area he'd already dabbled in. So Peter, when are you starting your uh, cinematography career? Uh huh. I dropped out of film school to be a, be a musician. It's it's truly a testament to like their character and all that for them to be able to like dedicate themselves like this and like be open to somebody else's vision and, and things like that over a computer, you know, like that's, I was just some voice saying things to them. Another thing Matt wanted to prove especially was that, you know, he could continue to work in this weird climate. Um, with his regular production team. And uh, I think they did a great job of sort of navigating the, the, the weird challenges that we're facing. I mean, one way that they really did that was uh, with this remote camera slider, where it was uh, basically set up on something called a Dana dolly, which is essentially two pipes and then a, a cam that moves back and forth on them. And then it was uh, motor controlled in many axes. They were programming this thing and running it from across the country. And um, I think, you know, with tools like that, there's definitely some longevity to this version of filmmaking. Okay, so uh, is it possible to speed up the move and then feather the ending a little more so it doesn't have a bobble? Based on this script, uh, we need other ways to move the camera because a lot of this manic state isn't really going to read unless we're we're moving with him. And uh, and I had, I'd been experimenting a lot with um, the Snorri cam. You get a kind of a wider angle lens and you get it real close to his face. He's going to look He's gonna look, uh, you know, like he's been in quarantine for a couple of weeks and kind of freaking out. That's awesome. Whenever you're like, yeah, can you give me that like kind of tired eye, bouncing around looking for stuff? Yeah, that's pretty sick. Like if I'm writing a song and I have no access to a drum kit, that's great. Good. It's not gonna have real drums on it. I can, I know it has to have drum machines, and so the decision has just been made for me. And so to work in uh, like similar confines, but in video world is sort of, uh, it's been really useful as well because, you know, we needed to make do with the refrigerator in my kitchen. You know, you couldn't go out and, and get any uh, like smattering of props and lights and gear that we wanted. Uh, it was kind of just what we had collectively and then like one run to a lighting place and back with the mask and gloves on and I came just to get a couple of things. And the drips are going good, Elliot. You can see them pretty good, I can't see them. Yep, they look good. Awesome. Okay, and action camera. At, at the end of the day, I just feel you know thankful to have been able to do the project, and um, you know it just felt good to make a film. I think you know staying motivated is not hard when you have uh, 
like a clear path to follow and like quarantine is just another weird limitation that you know we can choose to view as a creative limitation as opposed to like a uh, like a limitation on the, like, the ability to actually get things done. So I don't think it's going to hurt uh, productivity so much as it's just going to sort of like shape the way that our art looks a little bit. That's a wrap. Just to put in hard work. Woo! Nice camera. That's a wrap. <laughs>